Hi, I'm Mark Rossano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Today, we're going to go through the Primary Vision Frack spread count, you know, talk about what we're kind of thinking for the next uh, couple weeks through January. And then we had a report out today where we went really deep in terms of what do we think is going to happen, you know, what happened with OPEC, and then you know, where where does the economy kind of start off? And we have some some little summaries in here, but yeah, you know, we go more in depth than that. And then obviously we have our econ show, which goes yeah, in a lot more depth. And then obviously the EIA show came out on uh, Thursday, unfortunately, because of my internet issues. So hopefully that is uh, cleared up. And then on uh, and then on Saturday we'll have uh, the OPEC show coming out live, uh, coming out uh, finally coming live. So without further ado, uh, the primary vision frac spread count went up by 10. So we uh, we bounced from 133 to 143, which isn't all that surprising based on some of the commentary that we've we've been making in terms of you know that quick snapback once we come back from uh, from uh, the holiday. Now obviously there's a, another tailwind behind that, which is just the the Saudi uh, cut uh, the voluntary cut of a million which is obviously pushing crude which is currently sitting at about 5230 so obviously there's a lot of momentum behind it and we'll show you the, the you know the crude curve so you can kind of understand you know where hedging is how this is going to incentivize guys to pull um, activity forward you know the biggest increase was obviously the Permian you know the the ones that we that were more excited about in terms of you know really seeing that acceleration is definitely the Permian with a uh, with more leverage towards the Delaware, which we think is going to attract more capital now that budgets are re- are refreshed. Uh, the Eagle Ford is going to be another big driver. You know the biggest surprise that we really had was really Appalachia, and that's one that we um, had a little bit of a pop. Uh, that'll start to normalize, but again, if you just look globally, like if we look at China, we look at at uh, Japan. Uh, you know, Asia in general, there's a huge cold snap. I mean, China, it's the coldest has been, I think it said since 1966, uh, Japanese LNG prices are exploding. So there's definitely going to be some pull through, which is going to be supportive, a little bit less on Appalachia, but very much so in Haynesville. So, uh, you know, really the, the, the growth that we're expecting is really going to be driven based on Permian and the Eagle Ford as we go through uh, January. And, and, as we go into this um, 2020 versus 2021, you can obviously see we're still off from from those normal levels, but we've started to come back up, and we think we're you know at this price deck where we will cross back above 159, and we'll get into the 160 level fairly quickly. Just given you know there's there guys are coming back from holiday, and now that not only can you get a um, uh, a hedge, but you we're also going to start to see some of the exports open back up, just given the movement that we're seeing uh, out of the OPEC plus meeting. So here's when we're talking about when we look at the last three months. So it's been a pretty gradual shift higher, you know, uh, the higher lows, higher highs. And this is why we think on this next round up, just given based on the support and not only crude pricing, but also in hedging, that's going to easily take us back above that 160 level. So when we look through January, we're definitely going to get towards, uh, and definitely is obviously a dangerous word, but you know, just based on kind of where we sit, there's definitely going to be some support and some momentum to get us back above that 160 on the back of Texas. And when we look at just the crude curve, it's important to appreciate, you know, the, the versus. So the red line is October 8th. The blue line is December 8th. The green line is December 31st. And then obviously the yellow line is right now. And you can see just based on where the curve has gone, how we have this massive move in the front of the curve. And the benefit is, you know, you can essentially hedge. And this isn't including costs. This is just looking at what is in the curve right now. You can hedge above 50 out until October. So given there's there you know there's costs there's you can spread it off you can have a put spread you can have a, uh, different collars there's different structures that you can have to try to offset cost or if you just say look I want to protect downside give me straight put or a um, or a swap and here you can see kind of where the opportunity is and the backwardation is obviously going to pull that forward. And you can see how the red line showing that contango and now how that's completely flipped on its head. And these are things to consider when we're, when we're looking at where, how quickly does act- activity come back. And we've already seen rigs spoken for through Q1, especially in Texas. 
And now the obviously uh, frac spread counts are going to come on the back end of it. And it's important to think about, and this was something that came out from uh, Bloomberg today. I think it's important to understand or appreciate federal lands versus uh, high areas of oil and gas. So when we look at the Permian, you can see that New Mexico is really where we see some of that federal land. Obviously, the DJ has has a large amount that is on federal land, but you can see most of the activity is was really operating away from that. And obviously, the the areas where it's kind of uh, that light green, you can see was that that's where there's that overlap. Now, the bigger component, especially in New Mexico, is some of the water rights are changing, especially when you're looking at the federal lands. And that's why we think that there's going to be activity to kind of do as much as they can ahead of losing some of those rights because then costs will go up. But you know, just in terms of what is the near-term impact to the new uh, rules, like in the DJ, uh, Colorado just announced or just formalized, you know, a 2,000 uh, foot setback. These are things that really were already kind of anticipated and so not too much of an issue. But that's why one of the areas that we think we'll see a decline in activity will be in the DJ, not back to zero, but definitely at a reduced level from where we are. And that's, but, you know, just based on where we are, where we, we're sitting right now, the Bakken is another one that, that could see a little bit of pressure on the federal side. But again, the near-term impacts that Biden can have in terms of banning fracking, it's going to be difficult just because obviously a lot of it isn't on federal, but even if it is, you know, it's going to be a matter of court approvals. You know, this will be fought, unlikely to get injunctions, but, you know, most of that is kind of prepared for when we start looking at the high concentration versus federal exposure. And it's important to appreciate we're still exporting a lot of crude, and this is a good backdrop for U.S. crude being sold into 50 different countries. You know, this is U.S. consensus 2020 through September, so you can see just the amount of crude that we've been uh, moving through the world. And the, obviously, Europe is an important one, just given Europe it, the size. You know, we've talked about some of the pressures that remain there, especially with the lockdowns and the growth of the North Sea currently at about 2.11 million and, uh, and Norway loading at about 1.73 so, uh, million barrels a day. So that's some of those uh, components where India is going to be one to watch, especially as we go into the new year. And then, you know, where are we going to sit with China, Korea, because Korea has actually been a big buyer. They have their uh, their issues with COVID, and then China just had a lockdown in Hebei, uh, one of the cities there of 11 million locked back down because of COVID, but they also have Lunar New Year, so we should see what kind of movements we're going to get on crude. Now, the India oil demand came out. Uh, this is the uh, preliminary data, so oil demand was down 1.4% year over year. Uh, it was really driven on the back of diesel, so diesel uh, demand was down 2.8%. Uh, which the now gasoline was up 9.4%, but just to understand why diesel would have an out an outsized benefit, uh, uh, damage to uh, oil demand, because diesel demand, uh, you know, the diesel demand numbers year over year, you know, came in at 7.2 million tons, and gasoline is 2.7. So diesel still the main driver in India. And but then my own LPG continues to surge. You know, LPG was seven point four uh, up seven point four percent. That's the one that we remain the most bullish on, especially when we start looking at liquids. When we start looking at LPG, LNG, those are the two that we think are going to have, you know, some running room. Especially even after we get the seasonal pop, LPG is going to be a good driver. But diesel will be the one to watch, and this is what we've been seeing: Singapore builds. Um, you know, some of the exports coming from India have been down, and it's just because they're still feeding the demand there, trying to make up with that and limiting the exports that we're seeing just because it's it's a crowded market, especially with China, you know, maintaining a large amount of their exports. And the reason why is, is when we look at the daily indica- uh, indicators. So this was just updated. And when we're looking at this overall, you can just see, obviously, we have that dip into uh, for the holiday season. So really nothing surprising. Uh, going into the holiday where we normally get that slowdown. The question is going to be how quick is the pop back to pre-holiday? And that's the one that we remain concerned on. And and just to be clear, January is normally a slow month. Like it's not like we normally get this big gigantic snapback. It's more gradual. The question is going to be when do we start to level off? 
Uh, emerging markets are going to come back a little bit faster. The problem is, again, advanced economies are seeing a renewed lockdowns and or more restrictions due to COVID. And there just continues to be an economic stress, as we've talked about in, in depth in the economy show. And that's why we're thinking that the advanced economies level off at a, at a kind of a new level to the downside. And that'll just put inherent pressure on some of those emerging markets as they're not able to sell as much in, on the uh, export-import side. And that's just kind of the global view. And then uh, just a quick update, and we'll cover this more next week. But when we look at non-farm payroll employment, this is what we've been talking about, this kind of like rollover where we ha- get got this nice sharp bounce. And then Things started to flatline a little too early, and now in December, we actually went down 140,000. Uh, this is is something that is going to be a bigger problem, especially as we start going through the, the breakdown of what everything is. And the reason why I say that is because we did have some, some areas that didn't report. And it's important to just to kind of appreciate, and you know, I'm just pulling up now, so non-farm payroll is down 140, change in private payroll is down 95. You know, manufacturing was up 38,000, which it, it, that is a positive, obviously. But again, it, it's just a matter of where, where do we start to get this turnaround? So now, you know, uh, President-elect Biden is talking about increasing the minimum wage to $15, you know, seeing, uh, pushing through additional stimulus. The question is, where is that money going to come from? If companies are already struggling, how are they going to be able to manage a $15 minimum, especially when you have competition in the employment pool because you're just you just have this this slowdown now unfortunately we think this is going to accelerate into January just to give some kind of backdrop so services the services side was down 188,000 government was down 45,000 so when we start going through the good side obviously the uh, construction was up 51,000 not surprising if you look at construction numbers manufacturing again was up that 38,000 on the service side there were two good uh, three good spots Retail up 120, transportation up 47, where if you've been following our EIA show, trucking is, is moving strong. So that's not uh, a crazy thing, and, and that's the delivery side. Uh, professional and business services up 60,000. The issues are services down 188,000, leisure and hospitality down 498,000. That's a huge number, which is something to watch to see how that can come back. Accommodations down 24, and restaurants unsurprisingly down 320, uh, 372,000. So those are things that we continue to be concerned about, especially as we have inflation starting to creep higher. And for those that have followed, we don't think it's creeping, it's accelerating uh, pretty aggressively, which is a bigger concern as we head into the new year. And then we saw consumer credit uh, really shift to the upside. So consumer credit in November rose 2.1%. And it was, it's just really because it, it missed estimates by a wide number. So consumer credit was expected to be up $9 billion, uh, was up 15.3. So, and then if, we, if you remember in our, in our economy show, we talked about holiday spending and how that really increased uh, the, the debt load, which is, isn't surprising given that normally happens, but it was, it was sizable just given kind of the limits in cash and struggles that people are having on the... Um, on the uh, job and and wage side. So this is kind of the the backdrop, uh, just a quick summary to get everyone back up and running in the new year. So we hope everyone had a, um, uh, you know, a great holiday, you know, happy new year to everyone. Uh, Please like, share, subscribe, you know, your, your support is appreciated. You know, sharing this is great. You know, we need the subscriber, uh, the subscribership, if you will. So again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And again, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Have a great weekend.